Good day, everybody. For those that are here, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm just going to jump straight into it. I'm sure a couple of people may join us along the way. Um, but for those that are here, thank you so much. And let's get into it. So in today's webinar, we're going to be talking about getting started with Pluto LMS. It's the 22nd of September 2021. And my name is Ian Ferry, the founder of Pluto LMS. And if you want to reach out to me, my email is on this page. So just going into the agenda for today, what we're going to discuss is the setup strategy and the approach to the Pluto LMS environment. We're going to talk about site branding and how to set that up. We'll talk about setting up your courses, setting up users, and then finally, we're going to end off with a Q&A session in about half an hour's time. So firstly, the setup strategy. Now, if you're new to the learning environment and particularly the online learning environment, there's a couple of things to consider. There are many consultants out there. There's different opinions. There's different literature. There's different approaches. Um, what we're going to talk about today is very much a high level overview and we really just want to spark some creativity, ways of thinking, ask certain questions and hopefully that way you'll be better equipped by the end of this webinar and understanding really how to get started and what you can do with Pluto LMS just to get started in the best possible way. So there's three things we're going to discuss in the setup strategy, that is how to go about planning in your implementation for the system, understanding what tools you have with Pluto LMS. And then finally, once the planning is done, you understand the system, how do you actually go about actioning these items? So first of all, in the planning phase, you know, depending on who you are, you may be new to the LMS environment, you may have moved over from a different LMS to Pluto LMS. Regardless, in all of these situations, you're gonna have a use case. In other words, what are you using your LMS for? Is it for internal staff training? Are you training externally? Are you selling courses? That's something to bear in mind. And ultimately, who are you servicing? So who is your end user? Is it a student? How old is that person? Um, where are they located? What is the best sort of structure for them? You gotta think about your end user and the audience that you're trying to serve through your online content. So really some questions to ask yourself is, what am I using my LMS for? So in the instance of internal staff training, for example, you really wanna use your LMS to provide it training for your employees, keep them up to date, keep your certifications up to date, et cetera, giving them the tools that they need, growing their learning experience, obviously keeping track of everything um, to improve their overall experience within your company. So that's just one question to ask is, what am I using my LMS for? Then you look at what are my goals? Is my goal to increase the pass rate of all of my students within my school by 20% this year or 5% this year on average? Those are some of the things you've got to think about and why you're implementing the LMS. So think about what your goals are for the LMS environment and it'll give you a better picture going forward. And very importantly, we touched on this a bit, but who is my target audience? So if you're doing internal staff training and that's how you're using your LMS and you want to grow their employee experience, that's your goal. The target audience would be the employees within your organization. So another thing to ask is what type of content would best suit this audience? Do they learn better by video? Do they learn better through live training, you know, Microsoft Teams meetings or Zoom calls or Google Meet meetings, etc. What type of content will best serve them? Is it video? Is it text? Is it quizzes? Those are some of the questions. And, you know, it's you can also send out a survey to your organization, for example, to see what content would best serve them before you even go and build all of the content. Or if you're offering external training, speak to your clients. Or if you're selling courses, speak to the people who you're selling to. What content best serves them? Once you've done your planning, you've got an idea of your goals, you know who you're serving, it's really important to understand what features Pluto LMS can offer you. And more importantly than the features, are these features scalable? So will it work with five users? 
as well as 500 users or even 5,000 users. Got to think about the different features in their different contexts. So some of the things to ask yourself is what Pluto LMS features will best suit my use case? You know, if you are selling courses, you probably want to have your features simple, easy to use, a couple of clicks and get them through the course as efficiently as possible to give them the best experience. If you serving internal staff, you want to serve video content, um, you may want to assess them along the way. So we definitely here to help you with that. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we can share what other clients are doing without obviously revealing any names. Um, we've got a lot of different use cases of our platform. We obviously know the platform very well um, and we're more than happy to help you with what features will best suit your use case. So some things to think about is, you know, should you be using quizzes or should you be using assignments for your assessments? So if you're serving 50 users, assignments may be okay because you're going to have 50 people submit a PDF document, for example. You'll need someone in your team to mark those documents. That might be okay for 50 users. But what if you have 5,000 users? Marking 500 to 5,000 different assignments will obviously be quite time consuming. That's when we would recommend quizzes because with Pluto LMS, quizzes are automatically marked. So you could have 5,000 quiz submissions and get 5,000 results instantaneously. So those are some of the things to think about when creating your course. What will work today as well as tomorrow? And, you know, should you be bulk uploading your users or sending them to a sign up page? Another question to think about. It depends on your use case again. If you know and you have a set amount of users, let's say you have 300 staff within your organization, it may be simple just to bulk upload those 300 staff members via a CSV file. Or if you're selling courses, perhaps you want to send them to the sign up page. It's completely up to you. And then always ask, will these features work at scale? If you're struggling with any of these concepts, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to help. Um, but the important thing to think about is once you've built your course, how self-managed can it be? Can it run itself? Will the assignments, the features, etc., do the work for you? Nine times out of 10, everything is automated with Pluto LMS, but there will be times to consider what the best feature is for the right time and use case. Then finally, once you've planned and understood what you would like to do, the final step is obviously to action your plan and understanding. So that's where the setup comes in and that's where the Pluto LMS support really does come in. So some things to ask yourself in the action phase is, you know, how do I add my team members to help me? One of the first things you probably want to do is add team members to your site so they can help you upload students, build content. It depends on the size of your organization. Um, getting more team members on the system to help you build is often a good idea right from the beginning. And then importantly, you know, what are my time constraints? Do you need to get content out quickly? Is it within a few weeks or is it within a few months? That will also determine how you build your courses and how you action it on the site. And then what support does Pluto LMS offer? You know, we're available. We, we offer unlimited email support. We offer live chat support and phone call support, depending on which plan you're on. Um, and if you reach out to us, we're more than happy to help. And then finally, you know, where do you begin? And this is where I want to spend the rest of the webinar talking about this very question. Where do I begin? So some of the proposed action steps that we recommend are the following. So you'll see site branding, create courses and adding users in green. That's what we will cover mostly in this webinar. Um, but to really start from the beginning and thinking about what is the best way forward, we really recommend starting with configuring your site branding you know, making the LMS system look like your own. It's good to log into a system that is your own. Secondly, add your team. If you have any team members that can help you build content, add them right away. Then you want to create course categories. 
then finally, you know, create courses after that, then set up course enrollments, set up integrations, if applicable. If you don't want to set up integrations, you can obviously skip that step, add users to your system. And then once they've enrolled into the courses, they're starting to progress through the content, it's time to actually see the reports come to life. So what I'm going to do now is actually jump into a live environment and just show you what it's like to log into Pluto LMS for the first time. So today is the 22nd of September. This may be different if you're watching this down the line or in the future. But as of now, I'm going to jump into the live environment and give you a first hand overview of what you'll see. So right now we've jumped and we've landed on a landing page. This is a home page of your LMS. Obviously, you'll have your own logo, you'll have your own splash image. You can edit a lot of this in terms of the coloring, etc. This is also hosted on your own domain. So it could be anything like courses.yourcompany.com. You can register your own domain. It's completely white labeled. There are marketing boxes over here that you can update with your own images. Um, you can change the text, etc. Add hyperlinks. That's up to you. And then at the bottom is a footer. You can add your, you know, your organization number, email, and your social media link. So this can all be updated. So let me actually log into the platform. And this is kind of what you're going to see for the first time as you log in. So you'll see the courses, some of the default courses or the out the box courses that we have just to sample some content. You can have a look at that. Um, on the top right, you're going to see your profile. And on the left, you're going to see some useful navigation items over here. So, you know, starting with site branding, you're going to click on site admin. You're going to click on site branding. And then, you know, you could set up a custom site domain. And then what you would do is click on your site theme. And as discussed a few, a few minutes ago, you can update your logo. You can change your favicon. The favicon is just the little symbol within your browser tab. It's that little icon over there. You can change your brand color. You know, you can update your front page. There's various options available to you. I'm not going to update it in this webinar. Um, we will cover site branding in more detail in the future. Um, and we are actually making some major upgrades and updates to the site branding module. You can update your footer. So you might want to include some footer text. You know, you can add your website URL, your social media links, etc. And there's some custom CSS that you can also add to the site. So that's the first thing I would do if I was logging into Pluto LMS is just update my site branding. And then if I click on home, once you've updated your logo, you've updated your color scheme, etc. This will all be applied to your site. The next thing I wanted to talk about is really how to go about starting and setting up your course. So by this stage, you know, if we go a couple of slides back, you've added your team, you've created categories. And then right now, what we're going to do is create the courses. So talking about the course setup, if I go back here, there's a number of ways you can add courses. Um, you can just simply click create course over here, or you could go to site admin courses and then create course. You can even bulk upload courses, but really just to get started, I'm going to click on create course. So we do have other webinars, which go through this in a lot more detail. Also speak about adding activities and resources to your courses. But what I want to do in this webinar is just ask a few questions, make you think in a different way and the best way to go about getting set up. So first of all, you want to give your course a full name. Um, I'm just going to call it setup sample. And then for the course short name, it could be anything you really wish. Um, you know, if you're offering a marketing course, this could be called Facebook ads, for example, it's really up to you. The course category, so after you've created a number of different categories, you can assign courses to the categories. A category is simply a collection of courses. So once you've created your course categories, you might have a marketing category. That can be for all the courses you offer in marketing. Or you could have a category um, 
dedicated to sales and those courses that's how you can group the respective courses course visibility you know by default it's set to show you can make that and turn that into hide uh, sometimes a good idea if you don't want to display your course just as yet um, before you actually go live so you can click on hide you know you can define a course start date um, it's not always important um, depending on what type of course you're offering but you can just leave this as default and if you don't define a course end date your course will just always be open if you decide on a course end date obviously students won't have access to the course post that date the course summary is really a place that gives you the option to show the end user you know for example if you're selling courses you might want to give an introduction to the course show which topic it's going to cover maybe a sample little video um, that's the page that they will see just before they enroll into the course um, or the course summary if you're doing internal staff training you may just want to explain you know what modules you're covering what the objectives are um, that can be all done over here and then you can, you know, you can get free images um, from unsplash.com um, just to help you with that. Or you can create your own images. Some other useful tools are Canva, canva.com. You can drop those images into this box and that's what will be displayed on the home page when the user is on your site. In terms of course format, um, this is actually a new feature that we have. You can decide on various formats. So. Typically, topics format is the most popular, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, you could have a social format. So a social format is basically like a Facebook timeline, if you wouldn't think of it like that, where it's just a communication forum. So where it's where you post questions and your students can you know, reply to those questions, etc., and create discussion boards. That's the social format. And then you've got the single activity format. Um, that's useful if let's say you have a SCORM package and you just want the user to jump straight into your SCORM package. You know, SCORM is a, in essence an already built course outside of the LMS environment and you can import that in here. That's useful. Um, topics gives you a lot more flexibility and I'll explain why now. So the default is topics. You can you know, decide on the number of sections um, that you want to have. Um, you can add more in the future and then your course layout you either want to show all of your activities on the page on on the actual um, course page or you could split it up by topic so when the user logs in is it boxed into topics or is it all displayed in one page by default we're just going to leave it to display on one page there are various other settings, you know, you, if you are offering a course to Spanish students, for example, you could force a language um, and there's various languages on Pluto LMS, there's quite a few. Um, and you can leave these other settings as default. When you click on save and display, um, at this stage, you may or may not want to enroll users. Um, typically, what you would do is just proceed to course content because there is no content in your course as yet. So we click on proceed to course content and you'll see that two topics get created. So you've gone through the planning phase. You've Now it's really about understanding what tools will best serve you. We have other webinar that will cover this in a lot more detail in terms of what tools are available. But I just wanted to give you a high level overview at first. So. If we click on edit course material, you know, you can change these topic names. Um, let's say you want to call it introduction. Great. That's all good. And topic two will be welcome to the team. It really depends on the content that you're offering and the audience that you're offering it to. When you click on add course content, um, we've recently actually updated this interface. So when you click on each activity it's going to give you a short summary of what the activity does what it's useful for and whether or not it's gradable and then if you click on this link it's actually going to take you to our help center and this will show you exactly what to do with that particular tool 
So it'll explain it in detail, take you through all the various steps. It's quite useful if you just want to see how to use the respective tools. So, you know, if we look at assignments and what I'd like to do is maybe cover this at a high level, um, just to give you some ideas. Assignments, that is manual marking. These are useful if you just need students to submit documents to you and you're okay with manually marking them. Assignments are a great feature for that. Attendance, this is really useful for if you have offline classroom environments. Um, let's say you have a training room at your office and that training room requires an attendance of your staff on the floor. They can scan a barcode, go into the training room and you can give them a live session. This is really useful to track offline training. Big Blue Button is a video conferencing tool. It's a third party tool that's available so you can launch Big Blue Button video conferences from here. Custom certificate, that just allows you to create certificates which are typically assigned at the end of your course based on the criteria that you give them. External tool, in other words, the LTI tool, um, this really allows you to connect third party systems. So if there is another LTI compliant um, system, a third party LMS, you can actually import that LMS content over here and display it to the students. Then with feedback, um, really useful. Again, you might want to do this after every topic or every module that you offer. Just a quick um, you know, rating. Did you enjoy this topic? One to five, or maybe you want to ask them specific questions, etc. This is just to get feedback from your students, and then it will generate the charts and the results for you once your end users have actually submitted their feedback. Forums are particularly useful if you want to create communication channels. Um, if you have 500 users in your organization, you know, there's nothing worse than 400 of those 500 users asking you the same question over email over and over again. So what's really useful in this case is to just post a forum and say, post the question to the forum. And then what's nice is once you've answered that question in a live you know, open forum to the course, you'll find that far less questions come after that because everyone will see the answer and maybe that same question pops up again and people can easily get answers. Um, this can come in the form of Q&A or open discussions. There's quite a, quite a lot of different formats to the online forums. Glossary, you may want to actually give definitions um, to your course users. The glossary tool is really useful for that. Um, one of our most popular uh, tools is our interactive content. This is effectively a free alternative to SCORM with over 40 different content types. Um, you can create presentations, you can create interactive videos, um, flashcards, and there's quite a range of activities that you can create here. The, definitely the most engaging content type that we do have. There's a journal, so you might want to actually have your users track their um, feedback in the form of a journal. Lesson Space, a great tool for online video conferencing. Um, it comes with an interactive whiteboard and quite a number of features. Um, really useful for live training, particularly in, in, in a school environment where a whiteboard is useful. There's also a code editor, so if you're teaching code, um, really useful third party. Um, we would definitely recommend it if you're looking for high engagement in video conferencing. Likewise, Microsoft Teams, um, really popular amongst organizations. Um, you can just plug and play your Microsoft Teams video conferencing over here. You don't need to leave the system, launch your Teams meeting from your LMS, and then the users within your course can access that. Quizzes. Again, really useful for marking automation, you know, true or false, drag and drop. There's quite a number of different question types. And then once the user submits the quiz, it's automatically marked and added to the gradebook. So really useful tool at scale. Reservations, just a great scheduling tool. If you want users to give the users the ability to book sessions with you, um, you can use this tool. SCORM package. Um, if you're using tools like Articulate, for example, and you have existing content that you want to bring into the LMS, SCORM is really useful for this. 
and it's just simply uploaded in the form of a zip. We've also got a Skype integration. Um, we've got a WebEx integration. So these are all video conferencing tools. Zoom, very popular. So you can launch your Zoom meetings from your course as well without having to leave your LMS. And then files, you can upload PDF, Excel, documents, etc. Um, this is when you typically want to share something with your students for them to download um, to their local desktop. Perhaps it's a PDF or an Excel template or anything like that that you may want to share that can be uploaded in the form of a file. Folders are just a collection of files um, in a single folder. So you can upload multiple files to a folder. Google Meet. Video conferencing tool, again, quite a number of different video conferencing options. This is useful for your live training environments as discussed earlier. And then pages. Um, I'll actually show you an example of a page and we'll embed a YouTube video and I'll show you what that looks like. But then finally, you've got a URL. So here is where you can actually add a website link. You know, if you want to send someone to a blog post or anything like that, you can just add the URL. Um, depending on the third party website, this actually can be embedded into your platform. So you can embed a blog post through the URL tool. But if they are blocking external site sharing, etc., um, you would have to ask the third party to unblock that for you. But then just sending them to the URL um, can be done if you don't want to embed that. So what I actually wanted to do here is add a page just to give you an example. And, you know, pages are really useful when you are creating your courses. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just going to call it um, video sample. So what I want to do is just go to a YouTube video over here. Um, and then I'm going to say share. I'm going to copy that share link. And then when I go back to my page content, What's really useful here is this editor. So you can expand this to get more options. You know, you can write text, you can change the color, etc., make it bold. Um, there's so many different options that you do have. If you are wanting to add a video, um, you can click on the video icon over here. You select video and that URL that you got from YouTube, just plug that in there. Your display options, um, you know, depending on your preferences, we typically recommend 700 by 700 or 800 by 800. Insert the media. It'll look like this. It'll be black, but don't worry about that. Um, and then when we click on save and display, that page will actually embed the YouTube video into your um, course, which is really nice. So when the users are navigating through your course, you don't need to send them externally to YouTube, for example, you can embed those videos inside of the platform. When I click on course home, you'll see that the page is added there. Some things to note um, when building your courses is you can move topics around by dragging and drop them. You can move activities around by dragging and drop them, um, which is really useful. And what you will notice is as you start to add content, and we'll have another webinar on this, so I don't want to cover this in too much detail, you'll see manual completion. Um, something I really recommend doing just before you start adding a lot of different content is going into course admin and actually updating your completion settings. So if we look at course completion, you can, there are various different conditions that you can add. You can leave all of this as default. You don't need to do this, um, but it's just something to think about. If you want to save yourself a bit of time is define your default activity completion. So for example, you know, everything is, uh, is made manual, which means that the student needs to manually mark it as complete in order to move on, but you may not want that. So, Let's use assignments, for example. I'm just going to edit the assignment default. So every time I create a new assignment, the default activity completion will be as such. So I want to say show activity as complete when the following conditions are met. I want to say not, not necessarily requiring that, but I just want to say as long as they submit it, then the assignment will be marked as complete. And I'll save changes. And then what will happen is, Every time you create an assignment, that will be the default 
activity completion. You can override this, um, but the other webinar will discuss this in more detail. And don't worry, if you forgot to do this and perhaps you've got an existing course and your existing client, for example, not to worry, you can actually bulk edit these settings. So let's say you have 50 pages on this page, you could simply click them, say edit, and then bulk update. So this is a page, I want the page to be marked as complete when someone views it. So I'll save changes and it will update that activity completion for me. So when I go to course home, you'll see it's now auto completion. So when the student clicks on it, they will actually progress in that way. And I'm not gonna cover this in this webinar, it's covered in another webinar, but that's how you're gonna track your completion progress through the course um, to see where your students are. So that's just something to think about when you are setting up your course in terms of content, as I explained, there's various types. Um, the next thing you wanna do is define your enrollment method. So now you've got content in your course, what I want to do is go out here and show you an example of a created course. So if I just go to this one over here, you can see there's you know a lot of content in here. Um, we spoke about the interactive content module. So what I'm going to do is just turn editing off and show you what this looks like. If I click on interactive video, you'll see it will load an interactive video. So I'm going to mute this. And when I click play, what's really nice about this is you can have a video and you'll get these little pop-ups, for example. Um, it's a really useful tool to use um, in the form of H5P, our interactive content module. You'll see over here, as you're watching the video, there's a pop-up quiz. It will say what type of you know, berry is this? It's a strawberry, check, complete, great, continue. And they can continue watching the video. Um, really popular use type um, with Pluto LMS is our interactive content video builder. And I said all of this is, is free. You don't need SCORM to do this. Um, it's natively built into the platform from H5P. Really popular tool. So just jumping back to enrollment methods, um, it depends on the number of enrollment methods that you have. You know, you might have been testing something. No users are assigned yet. So what I want to do is just delete that. Great. And then by default, every course will have manual enrollments. Manual enrollment simply means if you click on enrolled users, you would need to go and click. Let me just remove that sidebar. You would have to go and click enroll users and then select the user from the drop down list in order to manually enroll them. So that's how that would work. You can assign roles to them when you enroll them as well. Um, another webinar will cover that in extensive detail. So that's what they mean. That's what we mean by manual enrollment. So going back to enrollment methods, you know, depending on the enrollment methods that you want to achieve, if you go to our support documentation, just want to go to the home page. What's really useful is if you scroll down just a little bit and click on course enrollment, it's gonna explain how to set various things up. And we did cover this in extensively in another webinar, um, but really our support docs do provide you with step-by-step -step guides as to how to add these various enrollment methods. So you've built your content, you've created your enrollment methods. So what's the next step? The user setup. So, once you've defined your enrollment methods, you've created your course content, you've you know defined your integrations, which we covered in another webinar, you really want to start thinking about how to get users onto your system as step one, and then how to get users into courses as step two. So going back to the live environment, what I showed you now, or just, just a few minutes ago, was getting users into your course and we covered a webinar on that exclusively. What I wanted to just do here at a high level was thinking about how to get users onto your site and what's the sort of flow you can start thinking about. So adding users to your site, there are various options. So I just wanna to go to our support docs and just show you where this exists. So if we go back to the home page over here, 
and we scroll down slightly, we've got the user management section, and there's a whole section on adding users to LMS, and we'll show you the various options um, that are available to you. You know, you can manually add users, you can send them to a sign-up form. We did cover a lot, all of the methods, um, and there actually are more methods here, just via integrations, that's why it's not shown over here. But there are more methods of adding users to the course, and we covered a webinar on that. But I just wanted to really cover this at a high level of what's going to be best for you. So if we go to site admin and we go to users, what we're going to see is various user management capabilities. And if you are offering internal staff training, you know, we, we really recommend just a simple bulk upload CSV, get all the staff onto your platform, easiest way to get going. If you are using an existing CRM, perhaps you manage your staff um, through some sort of, you know, CRM like HubSpot, for example, or Salesforce, you can use Zapier, you can actually pull information from there using Zapier. Um, we covered that in another webinar, um, but typically a bulk upload, it's probably the easiest way to get going. If you are selling courses, what you want to do is send them to your sign up form. Um, so if you log out on your homepage, there will be a sign up button. Um, we can disable that for you. If you don't want users randomly signing up to your site, that can be disabled. Um, but if you're selling courses, you typically want to send them to a sign up page. If you are offering external training, so you may have courses that you package. Um, let's say you have a number of different courses that you package for, for organizations. You know, another way of doing that is through, you know, bulk upload. We really recommend a bulk upload. Um, you can manually add users um, if there's small amounts of users. Um, that's something to really think about to get them onto your system. There are various other ways as well. Um, if you're offering external training, sometimes you're accepting payment offline and only once they pay you in an offline environment, let's say they an organization comes to you and they pay you for 500 users to access your courses, you can accept that payment and then bulk upload them. That's the most popular way of getting users on for external training. But there really are a number of ways um, to go about it. And if you're struggling please feel free to reach out to us. I'm more than happy to help in that regard. So, you know, once you've bulk uploaded the users to your platform or the users are now on your platform, you've created them or they've signed up or they've enrolled via an API or they've come in via CRM through Zapier, for example, they're now on your platform. This is, kind of, this is the first page they're gonna see. They're gonna see the available courses that you're offering to them and that's where they can make the decision to actually enroll into your course, depending on the enrollment methods that you set up. And that's really important. So depending on the type of enrollment methods that you have set up, typically what you wanna do if you just have staff that you want freely accessing material, for example, what you wanna do is click on your course, click on enrollment methods and add self-enrollment, for example. This is not going to require the user to make any payments. You know, they belong to your organization. They have access to the platform. You want them to have free reign on the platform to access various courses, for example. You can set up self-enrollment. We definitely recommend this. Um, what is quite nice is, you know, you can give it an instance name if you are having multiple forms of self-enrollment. Um, and you can leave all of these settings as default one of the important ones of here is an enrollment key so perhaps you don't want certain staff members logging in without an enrollment key for example you can actually set up a key to restrict access until they actually enter that key into the course that is possible give them the default role as a member um, there's other various things you can do here sending them a welcome message etc and once you add that to your course you'll see the enrollment method come up over here. So that's quite a nice thing to do if you just are granting access to your staff members through self-enrollment. Um, typically, you know, if you are offering external training, you probably want to manually enroll those users. Um, the webinar also covered branch sync in quite a lot of detail. 
Um, branch sync actually just gives you the ability to when a user is added to a branch, in other words, a site-wide collection of users, they get automatically enrolled into the various courses. So that's nice if you just create a branch, let's call it marketing, and anyone in your marketing team who you add to that branch, they will get access to the courses that you apply to that branch. So that's another way of doing it. We covered that extensively in another webinar. Um, in terms of offering or selling courses, of course, you want to have your payment gateways. You know, there are various payment gateways. We did also cover that in another webinar. Um, but each enrollment method is going to have its use case. Often these use cases overlap um, and it really depends on your needs. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate in reaching out. We'll be more than happy to help. Great. So that covered, you know, simply creating a course. Um, we spoke a bit about enrollment methods, we spoke a bit about um, getting users onto your system, how they get onto the course, etc. Um, our other webinars do cover that in more extensive detail. Um, but now we're going to go into a Q&A session. So I have covered a lot of things at a very high level, um, just to kind of ask, the, ask a few questions, get some creative juices going. Um, I expect a few questions to come, um, so please drop them into chat and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Great, we have a question here. So is there a way to create a skeleton and copy and paste the content? Okay, so in other words, um, talking about duplicating a course or creating a template course and then being able to actually paste that content elsewhere, Yes, most certainly. Um, you know, let's say this course was our base template. You know, there's there's topics already in here. There's there's actual activities already in here. What we can use, what often clients do is they might create a template and they'll hide that course. So it's not something that's actually accessible to the student. It's just something accessible to the site admin or the course creators. So they'll hide that course and use that as the template for their content because they might offer the same content in multiple courses. So what they do is they typically hide the course and then what you will do is go into a course that you're busy setting up. You will click on course admin, import, and then that way you can actually select the course. So in that case, we've got the list course over here, continue. Um, you can untick some of these, you know, maybe you just purely want to bring in the activities, nothing else. Um, so we'll do that next. Um, uh, you might not want to include the first section, but you definitely want to include that. So we'll leave that. And then I don't want to bring in my SCORM and I don't want to bring in my files. I just want my H5P modules. We'll go next. It will give you a quick summary of, of what you're importing. You can scroll through that, perform import, and then it'll, it, it'll give you a green law success message, say continue, and then it will successfully import that content that you brought in. Um, so that's quite a nice thing to do. Great. Next question, um, is there a way for me to change the site background color? Good question. So. Right now, what we see, it's white. Um, you know, that's typically, like most platforms, you're going to have a white background. Some people, you know, prefer a black, dark background, for example. Um, when it comes to more advanced sort of um, site branding preferences, what you can do is go into site branding, click on primary. That'll be your primary theme or whichever theme you would like to customize. There is a custom CSS module. So you can apply custom CSS, which will change the background color to your site. Um, you know, a, a nice resource to go and look at is W3Schools. Uh, it's a website that gives tutorials on certain coding languages. We definitely recommend a developer. Um, you know, if we just copy that link, I'll just paste that in over here really does give you advanced um, tutorials. Um, so you can, you know, define certain things, header colors, header backgrounds, etc. If you do want to get more advanced, um, that is certainly possible. 
Okay, we have a question. It is, do you have existing content that we can use? Yes, um, we most certainly do. So on our website, plutoalames.com forward slash video library, um, we have partnered with an external company um, that has over 280 ready built videos. Um, what's really nice about this is they have these videos. You can simply embed them into your platform. Um, there's a whole range of different um, videos out there. There's critical thinking, um, there's leadership, there's customer service, um, there's quite a range of different videos. So if you go to this, you can actually see all of them. Um, what we are offering at the moment, if you want to jump onto a call and see these videos, um, we're more than happy to help. Um, but on this page, you'll see the full video list. And um, we've also got some pre-built courses, which are quite nice. Um, and the various topics, um, challenging customers, communication skills, customer service, leadership essentials, pandemic fatigue, um, re reception, uh, receptionist sales stress. So there's quite a number of um, pre-built courses as well. If this doesn't meet your needs, we also have content development partners. Um, We've got content development partners in South Africa, as well as the US, um, depending on your location and preferences. So we can gladly refer them um, to you and uh, they can help you develop the content. Great, so we have another question. Is there a limit on course instructors or site admin? Okay, good question. So this typically comes in when you're adding your team. So you know, when you're adding a team, you're clicking on site admin, you're going to users and you want to assign roles. Um, you know, if you want site admin, you can have as many site admin as you need. So you can assign multiple users the site admin role. That is certainly possible um, as well as any other role on your system. So we do offer unlimited users on our higher plans, um, which includes unlimited role assignments as well. Another question, is blended learning possible? Most definitely. Um, so when you are creating your courses, you know, for example, um, I actually see another question coming in here. Are synchronous and asynchronous options available? So I'm actually going to answer both these questions. Um, so the answer to both those questions is yes. Blended, asynchronous um, and synchronous is possible. So in other words, what that means is you can have content that you can access in your own time. Um, so you could build the content, you know, these interactive videos, people can watch this in their own time, they can answer questions in their own time, etc. That is certainly possible. And then for your more live hands on training, um, we have the video conferencing options. So big blue button, Lesson Space, Microsoft Teams, Skype, Webex, Zoom, Google Meet. So there are quite a few options available to you. What if I want to upgrade my current plan? Will I lose my current content? Um, good question. Um, it sometimes does come up and no. So if you're on a lower plan and you're building content, um, you most certainly will not lose any access to the content that you have built. So you can upgrade to a new tier. All that will happen is the, the additional functionality that we're offering you on the higher plan will get added to your site. It will not override um, your existing content at all. Great. What support does Pluto LMS provide? Good, so great question. Um, we provide unlimited email support on all our plans. And then on our higher plans, we offer phone call as well as live chat support. So just in terms of getting set up, what we are currently doing is if you are gonna be signing up with Pluto LMS, you are getting a free 30 day onboarding program 
And what that's going to do is help you get set up. We tailor the setup guides for you. Um, we jump onto calls with you to help you get set up, show you the platform. Um, and we really are hands on with helping you to get set up. And after that, you'll still have access to our support team, um, all plans, unlimited email support, higher plans, live chat and phone call support, um, depending on your preferences. So there is a lot of support that is provided for you. Great, that looks like all the questions. Thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Um, we hope to see you all next week. And if you do have webinar suggestions, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear your feedback, anything you want to see in the future. Um, we'd love your suggestions and we'll definitely take that into consideration. Um, for those that are ending their day, have a great evening. For those that are just starting, have a great day ahead and we'll see you next week.